grading the big six from this weekend's Premier League action, we're starting off with Arsenal. Now, they're playing a side who have got one of the worst defences in the league relative to how good uh, Brighton are going forward. Um, they haven't kept a clean sheet in a club record 21 games. So, Arsenal were always going to be confident of scoring at least a goal. But then to keep a clean sheet, I mean, it's classy. For Saliba, I thought it looked absolutely superb. Another great performance from Declan Rice. But I think, look at the Liverpool-Man United game. Two forward lines that struggle to break down each other. I think, obviously, Liverpool were the real ones that struggle to break down Man United. We'll talk about them later in the video. But when when you're getting into the real business end of the season, you're looking at the Christmas period as the first influx of games where you can make meaningful advances on your opposition in trying to win the Premier League title. Um, you do need goals to be easy to come by and you need this kind of reliance on the front line. Uh, with Jesus picking up a goal, with someone like Kai Havertz picking up a goal, it, it meant that Arsenal never felt in doubt. I think they need the likes of Havertz to come in with 10, 11, 12 goals in all competitions uh, this season to, to pick up the, the effort that was spread around last season with Trossard, with Nketiah, with Jesus. I think he was, he's been brought in, uh, Kai Havertz, to add even more goals into the side. He does score a lot of goals. If you, if you look at his time at Bayer Leverkusen, he's got a good finish on him. It was a good finish against Brighton. So Arsenal have got this defensive uh, rigidity. And going forward against Brighton, they looked a lot more free-flowing. They created a lot more chances and beating Brighton at home 2-0. A side that can be a bit of a bogey side for Arsenal uh, in recent years. It was the game that obviously cost them really mathematically winning the Premier League title. 3-3 um, three, three draw, I think that was. To keep a clean sheet, that shows vast improvements. And seeing the likes of Kai Havertz scoring, I think he's got 4-7 and seven now, which is, I think, better than the forward line of any forward player for Man United this season in the Premier League. That has to go for something. They are the side with a deep squad. They're a side with more players in form than Man City. They've got a deeper squad than Liverpool. Uh, and they were there last season where Liverpool weren't there. So to get a 2-0 win against Brighton shows a lot of improvement, a lot of progress. You have to give it a big fat A. Right, we'll talk about Liverpool Man United later on in the video. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, Man City versus Crystal Palace. Shocking, really. You're 2 0 up. Look, obviously, Crystal Palace have come to the Etihad and beaten Man City. So, if it's a 0 0 and you kind of get hit by an Andros Townsend screamer, the best goal of his life, that's almost a different narrative. And you can sometimes face a low block and really struggle. You're 2 0 up. It should have been three, really. I think um, there were some big chances missed before the 74th minute where Matete gets ahead of his man. I think it's, I think it's Ruben Diaz. And it was a, a level of not arrogance, because I don't want to put a negative connotation on City players as if they've done anything too wrong in the last 12 months, 18 months. But it was a level of maybe fatigue. It looked slow at points defensively. There wasn't there wasn't that aggression. There wasn't that big foot, that big challenge that we, we, we want to see from the City back line. When you're 2-0 up, they should be hungry for a clean sheet. Angry they've not kept a clean sheet. We did see frustration when it was a 2-2 draw, and certainly from Pep Guardiola. So you can't be 2-0 up against Crystal Palace and draw in that game. I'm sorry. They're rubbish. They're rubbish. They've, they've lost seven last nine. Barely scored a goal. They're rubbish. And Elise came in. He was absolutely superb. And if you get a result against City at home after being 2-0 down, they're a decent side. And they will be this season. They'll probably come 11th or 12th or whatever it is. You can't be 2-0 up if you're desperately trying to win the Premier League and show some desperation, show some fight, show some vitriol that you actually want to do it. And that's fine. Maybe there isn't any at the club. Maybe, maybe City need a transitional season where, where, where we aren't at the level to, to compete season after season. It must be draining. But I'm sat here as a fan looking at the quality on the pitch, looking at Arsenal having, you know, dips. There can be dips for Arsenal. Looking at Spurs falling off the quickest failure to, to maintain a Premier League title race ever. You look at Liverpool who couldn't score against Man United. It's not a perfect league title. Whoever wins it is going to be a little bit clunky, a little bit low on points. It's not going to be 100 point seasons. Of course not. Maybe not even high 90s. So City have got a great opportunity with the squad that we've got, let alone De Bruyne, let alone John Stones coming back. So it has to change post Club World Cup. I think Guardiola is thinking about that a little bit as well. Um, and I think once that 
change happens hopefully there will be change i think city will get back to winning ways whether that's enough to to win the premier league is a big debate for another video make sure you subscribe for that i will be releasing it maybe actually around the club world cup talk about if man city can still win the premier league um we have to give it a d you can't be drawing 2-2 to palace after being 2-0 up right we're we'll talk about liverpool versus man united liverpool should be beating these at home i think the arrogance came when a lot of liverpool fans obviously i spoke to jonathan morley on the channel make sure you check that out if you want to listen to his opinion his take um very interesting um yeah, four, five, six nil from a lot of Liverpool fans was a little bit of arrogance for sure. Um, but apart from that, they should be scoring at least one or two. They should be scoring at least one or two against Man United. This Man United defence looked nervous. Onana certainly did. But then the likes of Luke Shaw, Delo, Amrabat, Maino kept it, kept this kind of skeleton of a defence going. And I, I thought Amrabat was decent. I, I really did. So you have to give credit to Man United. You have to you have to say that Liverpool struggled in the game. These are the facts. Their front three isn't quite clicking. I don't think Darwin Nunes is clicking. I think Gakpo has to come in with immediate effect. Jota similarly. They need a striker that can hold the ball up and he can lay off. A bit like Firmino used to do. Lay off other people and they've got a bit more silk going forward. At the moment, they're still a bit headless chicken. And maybe one day they'll score five. Next minute, they'll they'll, they'll, they'll fail to click against a side that's decently organised. Uh, that lived up to the, the occasion. So we have to give we have to give Liverpool, actually, I think a C. I think you should be doing a lot better against Man United. Um, and Man United, defensively resolute. I think it's how they go on into the rest of the season. I really think that defensive conservatism, building out from the back, keeping clean sheets and grinding out results will be the Man United way this season. If they are to do anything this season, it's a big debate if they even can do anything this season uh, because they've got a lot of gaps in the squad, a lot of disharmony. And obviously, there's people saying that maybe Ten Hag loses his job, which is, you know, crazy uh, based on what happened last season. So we have to give, I, I think you have to give Man United an A. I think great Man United sides with Cristiano Ronaldo and R Wayne Rooney would have taken a nil at Anfield uh, back, in the, back in the glory days when football was good before VAR ruined everything. So I think absolutely a uh, fantastic result for Man United and a poor one for Liverpool about Chelsea and Spurs Chelsea beating Sheffield United we're not going to go into too much depth I saw Mudrick smash one into a th fourth throwing uh, against Sheffield United of course you've got to win the game I was preparing to do a reaction video if they lost the game because that would have been crisis that was Titanic if they lose to Sheffield United but Sheffield United one of the worst sides to ever exist in the Premier League with all due respect to them it's not their fans' fault or it's not the club's fault or even Wilder's fault but Sheffield United you should be beating them so we have to give it we have to give them a, a B. Um, and then Spurs, what can I say? They're facing one of the worst keepers in the league, Turner. I think if Nottingham Forest get relegated because they keep playing him in goal, absolute rubbish. Um, obviously, Basuma gets sent off. Uh, Kuliszewski played well. So, a decent result for, 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 for Spurs. It papered over the cra cracks a little bit. I think they've still got a lot of gaps in that squad that they need to address with signings in January, Van de Ven to come back, and Madison. So we'll give Spurs a B. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll really appreciate it. Um, let me know your thoughts on grading these big six clubs. And I'll see you very soon.